Biobalance HealthCast, Episode 271, Men, Before Initiating Testosterone Replacement. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counsel. We've been having conversations about a lot of things lately. And one of the things that I wanted to uh, mention is that I'm concerned in our culture about the decline in civil discourse and the decline in the ability to have an involved and in-depth conversation, a nuanced conversation. I think social media and mass uh, 24-7 television uh, is interfering with our ability to just talk to each other. People want snapshots. They want slogans. They want a simple answer. And and we have less time because we have to read all this stuff for, in social media, and we have so much more information coming in. So it's often that people just read the bolded stuff. Yeah, just give me the blurb, give me the mm-hmm. headline. And that's why, you know, when we talk about different articles and things that we've read, we say the headlines rarely match the content. That's you know, true. So, so be aware mm-hmm. that there are two different things that you're looking at. So I was thinking about that in terms of conversations about what we do and what you do. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I run into people all the time socially or uh, out in the community that, that see these podcasts or that have read our book or that have worked with you or with mm-hmm. me and say, you know, so tell me more about what you do. And the minute that you say, well, because you know, they say, oh, you do that that testosterone clinic thing, you know, where all the guys just come in and, and get testosterone. Line up. Yeah. Get a nurse to go boom, 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 just yeah. like in the service kind exactly. of thing. It's not I, quite that say, bad. No, but. that's not what it is. And I say, well, what is it? And I say, and I say well. And the minute I say well to, to offer some well, stop nuanced, saying well. Le- well. Yeah, and I try that. <laughs> uh, but what I see happen is a, sort of like a flickering in their eyes that starts to glaze over because they just want the, sh- the seven, you know, slogans, uh, mm-hmm. uh, car bumper stickers. Mm-hmm. Seven words or less, advertising slogans, seven words or less. There are a lot of studies done that show we can retain a seven-word capsule. Uh, so if it's more than seven words, they lose the fringes. So I know you can't tell me in seven words what you do. <laughs> yeah. But I want yeah. you, so in service of a more nuanced conversation, mm-hmm. I want you to talk about how it is that you make the decision of whether or not a man needs testosterone. When he comes to your office, I've heard about you, and I've seen all this advertising, and I've seen you know lawyers advertising. You know, how do I know I'm not making a mistake? How do I know if I need anything? How do you make that decision, or do you just give this to everybody? No, I don't give this to everybody. Uh, well, I know that, but, <laughs> but tell them. No, but but when first of all, I have a screening process. Okay. Because I don't want to waste anyone's time or money coming to see me and then not being able to provide them with a treatment. I mean, how frustrating would that be? Oh, you know, you you go in, you spend a couple hundred bucks to talk to the doctor. Right. And then they say, oh, and mm, you don't need me. See ya. Right. I'm not going to do that. I think that's kind of a bait and switch. So I take the time to look at somebody's history. Right. So let's talk about men. I look at a man's history. I look at their lab. And then I decide by that whether they are ready to replace their testosterone. So that's one decision I can make from that. Mm-hmm. I also have decisions such as your borderline in your labs, you have symptoms you may be somebody who needs a lot more testosterone than others because testosterone isn't just if you're over 400, you need, you're fine, and if you're under, you don't. It has a, many more nuances to decide whether you re- it's really going to benefit you or not. The reason this is so important is when you replace testosterone, you're not just adding to it because people say, can you just give me a little dose? Right. I mean, it would be lovely if we could just top off right. your testosterone. If you had some kind of a dipstick and you could just weigh your core. Yeah, we're just going like, to yeah. put a little bit more in. The minute you put testosterone into someone's body, it shuts their own production down. Okay. So the stimulatory process that goes between your brain and your testicles, I guess I shouldn't point at myself, but your brain and your testicles, So, uh, the, but it is, it is a brain function mm-hmm. that once you have some testosterone in your body, 
enough from an outside source, it stops that process. So I have to just replace everything. I'm okay. going to shut down in a man, man and only you, and in you a man. You make that decision easily. No, I don't make that decision easily because that's a big decision. Right. And it doesn't matter whether I'm using pellets. It doesn't matter whether I'm using shots. It, it, and this is why it is so critical not to give testosterone to someone who doesn't need it. Right. Now, it's not a permanent deal. Okay, so if you gave it to me and shut my system down and then I quit taking it, my system would come back online? Yes, but it, it would, would come back online at whatever level it <clears throat> was online. So it was online. If it was brief, if I was like only if getting seventy percent anyway, I would still only be getting seventy percent. Right, but if you wait six years, testosterone is always decreasing over right. time after right. forty or fifty, depending on your genetics. So if you have, if your testosterone is decreasing and you use it for five years, and you were your total was at three hundred when we started, you stop taking your testosterone, it'll probably come back at 150 because it would normally be 150 five years later. It comes back to whatever your production would be at that age. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So when I'm looking at a man's testosterone, I have to make sure that, A, he has symptoms of testosterone loss because you, some men have low testosterone levels, mm -hmm. lower than... The, the rest of the group mm -hmm. and they they actually feel fine. They must have a lot of receptors or their whole life they've had a lower testosterone level. There's a huge range of what's normal for people. So if one man may have less, he had less sex drive, he had less fit hair, always. he had always. Not his, just as a result of a change, but always. His production was always low. And then right. you have guys that have huge amounts of testosterone, and then when they get to just... We should call those Neanderthals, but I'm, I'm convinced now that they're not, that's they're not, not an accurate descriptor. Yeah. <clears throat> no, they just are blessed. Yeah. And they're usually blessed at a young age, and they get their taller, bigger football players kind of right. guys. And yes, so, us library geeks used to talk about that a lot. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> and I used to just look at the football players. So, yeah. you know, what can I say? Yeah. So my friends were the library geeks, yeah. however. So um, when when we're looking at a range, I don't know what your range is. I mean, I don't know what you used to be. Individually. Right. Yeah. I, I, have, I ask questions right. like... How much muscle mass did you have when you were young? When you did you um, grow quickly? Did you were you were you a football player? Were you in contact sports? But I'm asking about how fast you matured and how much testosterone you had. Yeah. So so did that you have a mustache in the sixth grade. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. You know that's that's. I know guys that did. I know. So yeah. do I. So those are things that. Help me decide what your range is. Not something I would do on paper before you got to see me. Mm -hmm. But if you have a lot of symptoms and a normal testosterone level, I still want a consultation. I want to look at you and talk to you and see who you used to be, who you are now, what your need is. And then I'm going to try to bring your testosterone level up. Well, and there are other factors that may <clears throat> cause me to have a low level. I could be mm -hmm. taking medicines that impact it, or I mm -hmm. could have some illnesses that impact it. Yes. And so if you do a set of blood tests and get a, a data point, that data point by itself is not sufficient to tell you. That's true. You, you need to interview me to say, what medicines are you on or have you been on? Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to saying, how do you feel? Uh, how do you think? You know, What's your perceptual awareness of yourself? Mm-hmm. Because I'll come in and say, oh, I don't know, I don't know, because I don't know. But that's why I ask specific questions. Right. Because you have to an answer that. So, so the first step is I look at lab and I look at symptoms. If there's anything there that I think I can fix right. with testosterone and or other medications that increase testosterone, then I will have you make an appointment for a consultation because you will gain something from that. Right, Whether I treat you with testosterone or not. You may send me back to my regular doctor to say, I am concerned <clears throat> about the medicine that you're taking causing this effect. Go back mm -hmm. to your doctor who prescribed that medicine and mm -hmm. discuss it with them. Right. So there is, so you will get a lot out of, of the value. consult. Yes. 
but I don't promise those people that I'm going to replace their testosterone. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes when I talk to them, find out what they used to be, what they are now, I find that I I do need to replace it. But Mm -hmm. then I ask them. Mm-hmm. And give them the facts. I'm going to replace your testosterone. I can't top it off. I can't just give you a little. It'll shut your whole system down. It, it's terrible to give somebody too little testosterone because they were making some. And now I've just shut it off. Right. So we do that with birth control pills. We give women very low doses of estrogen and progesterone. Yeah. And that shuts down their production of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone because it shuts down the stimulation of the ovaries. Their ovaries go into hibernation. So what but we don't ha- what really care about their, women. What happens to their sex drive then? It goes down in most, in most cases. On birth control. Yeah. So for women, nobody really cares. <laughs> but for men, that's why it's such a big deal for men to start testosterone. Yeah. Because it's going to shut everything down, just like birth control pills do. Okay. So we wait till men aren't producing on their own, rule out other things. So so say somebody comes in, let's go with that my normal is a testosterone total of 400 and a free or active testosterone level of 129. Those are the numbers. Those are the trigger points for you to say, alert, alert. Right. If somebody is less than that. Now, Mm -hmm. you can have total testosterone of 600, and you're free. The part that's actually working is really low. That tells me, I need to look for some other things in your genetics, in your lifestyle. Do you drink too much? Do you take <coughs> steroids? Do you, what are you, what do you take or do right. that is decreasing the amount of active testosterone? Mm-hmm. I can fix that too. I mean, there are ways to do that. We usually look at estrogen levels. Your estrogen level, if men make estrogen, and sadly, we make a lot more estrogen or you make a lot more estrogen as you get older. Well, and there are some people, you know, like most people know the concept of body image, you know, ectomorph, mesomorph. <clears throat> there are some men who present uh, with a more feminine looking body, or mm-hmm. even with breasts, mm-hmm. especially men that are overweight, mm-hmm. who will have an estrogen testosterone imbalance mm-hmm. that's off weighted on the estrogen side. Right. So it may be that you need to adjust the estrogen mm-hmm. before you try to adjust the testosterone. Or you do it. Or I do it for those guys. They usually have such a low. I have one patient in mind who was a very productive, brilliant person, and he was morbidly obese and right. had man breasts, and he had a very high estrogen level, mm-hmm. and he was. I mean, he was so distraught. But he's been distraught his whole life. He said, ever since I was 18, I've been like this. Right. And I'm not taking it anymore. That's, that's been normal for him. That's his normal, but it's not healthy. Yeah. So I went back and looked at the kind of things that he was doing. He never exercised. Of course, he, did, he was made fun of. Yeah. So he didn't exercise. So right. he didn't go to gym class. He, right. he tried to get out of it. I remember those days. And those are things that that keep us the way we are. But he had so much estrogen that I, and so little testosterone total, he wasn't even making much, that I replaced him with testosterone and I gave him a Rimidex, which is a medication that stops the production of estrogen. Uh So that increases the active testosterone. So a Rimidex, it's off-label, but many things are off-label that we use. A Rimidex label use, use of, of a drug that we use all the time to right. prevent breast cancer, and and we do use it to shrink male breast development. Okay. So it is recommended for that. But I was using it to get rid of all that estrogen, help him lose weight, and I and to free up some of his testosterone. Uh-huh. I didn't want to give him testosterone and have him bind it all up. Right. So I did that. Then I put him on a diet. I put him on an exercise program. He has plenty of money. He has his own gym. No one has to watch him exercise. Yeah. You know, so so we went through that whole process and he literally shrunk. And when he came, I mean, it was only four months when he came to see me. And I, I remember this because I looked at his face and I didn't recognize him. Kind of like Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Or in those silly commercials. Yeah. 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 Where he 
you know. Just suddenly he's like, pop. Yeah, yeah. well, he didn't, he, he was never going to be Mr. He was an endomorph. But compared to him. But compared to him, yeah. it was drastic. Yeah. It was 50 pounds and he continued to lose weight. And so, so people, do you take pictures of people? Like, yeah. I do. So, so you can show them? Yeah. Look, this was you when you came in. This right, because they forget what they look like. Yeah. Oftentimes I'll go, this looks like your like much older brother, and now you're here, you know? Yeah. Or now you look like somebody totally different. And they go, whoa, they forgot what they look like. Oh, okay, so there's a medicine, uh, Arimidex, mm -hmm. that can affect your estrogen level. Which and affects that, your free testosterone. And, and that's an off-label prescription medicine. Mm -hmm. Are there supplements that don't require prescription mm -hmm. that you can take that also contribute to that or impact that? Well, in his case, it was full court press. Right. I gave him the supplement called DIM. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's many different forms of DIM. I use an extra strength by Olympia, but but there that's the strongest one I've found. But there are lots of different companies that make it, but mm -hmm. DIM is is a uh, it it blocks the production of estrone from testosterone, so it blocks that runoff where you're losing your testosterone, making estrogen, and then estrogen binds the testosterone. It's a twofer, right? In a, a bad twofer. way. Yeah. So we want to block it. Well, Arimidex blocks it at one step of the enzyme reaction. DIM blocks it in another. If I need. <coughs> If I need a lot of activity, I use both. Okay. Okay. If somebody just comes to me, say a 42-year-old comes to me with, he's making 800 of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. It's double the total, Your total minimal, you yeah. the minimal total. So I'm looking, I'm looking at him. He's got belly fat. He's starting to get some hips. And then he has a ton of estrone. Well, he's got to quit drinking 12, a 12 pack every night. Because a 12 pack every night gives him estrone. He's just drinking it, basically. It stimulates his liver to make it. So, so drinking he, all that alcohol doesn't make you a more macho guy, it makes you a more girly guy. Right. It takes away who, your. Who knew? Your. Well, you know, commercials. Yeah, they lie. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it, it makes you basically have all of the characteristics that women don't want to see on you, like breasts and a belly. Yeah. So And in the absence of a brain, but sometimes they're used to that anyway. <laughs> I have no comment. So, so this gentleman, I had to change him down to a couple beers a night, yeah. which was a big deal. I had to put him on Arimidex and on DIM. And I didn't touch his testosterone. I did not give him any testosterone. He was making it. Wow. All I had to do was get rid of all this estrone and change his lifestyle. Right. And it worked. Convince him to change his lifestyle because that's the fight you have all well, the time. Well, someone's, it, and he had an ED. But, but you also He's a 40 something year old guy. Yeah. And he has ED. That's not normal. Right. So. What's he doing to make this happen? Yeah. And it went away. I mean, we didn't even have to use pellets. We just got rid of the estrogen. So, But I mean, the correlates are so obvious to you because you work mm -hmm. with it all the time. But obesity <clears throat> and alcohol consumption, both are significant contributors to ED. Mm -hmm. They are. And, and so you don't necessarily need an ED pill if you can push yourself back. And the they're really expensive. And quit doing those eight-ounce curls. Right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, so so I see ev I see a huge range of patients. Right. I mean, for especially for men, when I see them, I'm not always sure whether they're going to have to be replaced. So two other drugs, or uh, another drug and another supplement. Problem. And another problem. Another problem that you addressed before <clears throat> we run out of time today. Uh, talk about using finasteride and what was the other? And salt palmetto. Salt palmetto. Okay, so... There's another, there is a, I usually talk about the bucket theory. Your body's making testosterone, filling up the bucket, hopefully. Right. And then there's a leak in the bucket where you're losing your testosterone. You're wasting it on. We have a picture of that in our book. Yeah. On <laughs> wasting it on losing the the testosterone into making estrone, which then comes back and binds up your testosterone. That's bad. Right. And this is the second leak. DHT, dihydrotestosterone is a metabolite of testosterone. So when you're putting your testosterone in every day and you're working out trying to trying to get more testosterone, then you may if you you genetically make DHT, 
usually that's the case. You make a lot of more of it as you get older. You know, that's what causes that hair on your back and older men and, you know, just kind of hair everywhere but their head. So, so that's DHT. You need some of it. You never want to wipe it out, but you can't, if it's really high, you're wasting your testosterone. So I block that. I plug up the leak first by using saw palmetto because it's natural and right. get it anywhere. It helps prostate health. It helps. <clears throat> it helps this problem. And if, that doesn't require a prescription. Nope, it's, it's over the, the counter. Right. <clears throat> but if that's not enough, then I use finasteride. Finasteride is Propecia, Pro, Proscar. Which hair loss? Yeah, Propecia is for ha- hair loss, and Proscar is for prostate enlargement. It literally blocks. The production of DHT. Okay. So that really that works. If that's the issue with this patient, and their testosterone is low, and their free testosterone is low, if I treat them with that, it very frequently can bring them up to a normal level and remove their symptoms. So you're looking from a database of a lot of knowledge about human hormone production and function and interaction schedules. And then you have to take an individual who presents himself to you and look at the data from his lab tests and his symptom recitation mm-hmm. and his history. Mm-hmm. And you have to individualize a response to him. This is not one size fits all. Everybody no, needs it. It is not. And it does seem like that on the commercials. And it by does. the way, if a commercial says that they have testosterone in it and you can buy it over the counter, they're lying. Don't ever, I mean, they're lying to you. Why would you buy a product where they're lying to you? There is no testosterone in anything over the counter. So that you don't need. But you could take saw palmetto, which is very inexpensive, and you could take that. You can get it at any grocery store. Mm -hmm. And you could take, it's usually three. Which may fill the hole in the bucket Mm -hmm. so that your bucket fills and and holds the testosterone that you make. You're not losing it by having it leak out. That's true. But if you're going to need a prescription, finasteride's a prescription, it should be watched, just like a Remedex should be watched. You should have a doctor that understands that every six months or every year, once they get you to to, to maintenance on either taking testosterone or just taking the supplements, you have to be watched because you don't want to wipe out all your estrone. And you continue to Then you can't think. And then you can't make bone, and you can't wipe out all your DHT, then you can't make muscle, and your sex drive actually goes down. So you need some of them. So that's why it takes a doctor to kind of follow the levels and make sure your dose is right. So summatively, one could say that you don't need a magic placebo. You need a good relationship (laughs) with a physician that knows you and nuances and knows all these all these and the treatment tricks for or you personally. treatments yeah individualized care is where it is yeah. i mean even the newest publication of the um, journal of metabolism and endocrine which is the endocrinologist bible says to do to treat with hormones sex hormones every person is different and you need to individualize that treatment it is not here Take a testosterone, whatever, or take a shot, or take a, for women, take Premarin and you're fine. That's not how we do things anymore. All right. Well, that's good to know. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.